Centuries ago, amidst the fog of revolution and the thirst for independence, our founding fathers found solace in the warm embrace of coffee houses. These establishments were not just places for a hot brew. They became crucibles of free speech, where groundbreaking ideas were brewed, stirred, and served. In those hallowed halls, notions of democracy, liberty, and justice were not just idle chatter. They were debated with passion, shaped with precision, and forged into foundations of our great nation. Today, as we find ourselves amidst a whirlwind of social change, political divides, and pressing challenges, we need to rekindle that spirit. In these spaces, we can confront the most consequential social issues of our time, not as adversaries, but as allies in the quest for understanding and solutions. To the coffee houses willing to join this mission, let your doors be wide open, your atmosphere inviting, and your tables a meeting ground for diverse voices. In the spirit of unity, dialogue, and progress, let's come together and meet on the Coffee House Tour. Here's to the future brewed in the past. Hello everyone, I'm J.R. Larson, and today we are at DreamShot Films in Fairfax, Virginia, in the shadows of Washington, D.C. The Coffee House Tour is a community conversation. Our objective is to get people to talk together about the most consequential social issues our country faces today and consider bold solutions. These are conversations powered by citizens of all ages, social and economic statuses, different backgrounds and beliefs. Our goal is to bring you the constant variety of social topics and opinions in a timely and unbiased manner. On our program today, we'll discuss the topic of religious freedom. Religious freedom is a fundamental right enshrined in international human rights laws, allowing individuals and communities to practice, change, or abstain from religion or belief according to their conscience. However, the implementation and protection of this freedom raises complex social questions, especially in those increasingly diverse and pluralistic societies. Today we're going to discuss three critical social questions related to religious freedom. How can societies balance religious freedom with other rights and freedoms? What are effective measures to prevent and respond to religious discrimination and intolerance? How can governments ensure the neutrality of the state in matters of religion while protecting religious freedom? Let's meet today's panel. Please welcome back Shalon Lizelle. Shalon is a proud mother of three. Shalon has worked as a registered nurse for 23 years. She holds associate and bachelor's degrees in nursing, as well as a master's degree in business administration. Shalon is an actor, model, published writer, YouTube uh, podcaster, and a beach lover. Once again, we're happy to have Ike Fessler on the program. Ike is a recently retired military officer after 27 years in the Navy and Air National Guard. He resides in Northern Virginia and is passionate about the local community, military initiatives, and America's place in the world today. And last but not least, please welcome back Andrew Filichikia. Andrew has been married for 23 years. He's an award-winning actor, music lover, and a retired U.S. Army serviceman. He loves growing his own food, and if you run into Andrew sometime out on the street, ask him how he knows Al Pacino. <laughs> All right, let's dive into our first topic. How can societies balance religious freedom with other rights and freedoms? Let's start with you, Shalon. Thanks, JR. It's great to be back. Uh, yes, if we're talking about balance, uh, there obviously needs to be a clear delineation of uh, boundaries and lines that should not be crossed when we're talking about religious freedoms. Uh, I'm always a fan of public education and if people are educated on what different customs are and religious beliefs then I feel like they would be more accepting of others. Uh, for instances of harm or where someone is you know demarginalizing someone uh, I feel like that they need to be uh, dealt with and people will need to know that if they are causing harm to another entity or another person uh, on the auspices of religious beliefs then that needs to be prosecuted in some in some shape or form 
uh, public education fosters an acceptance of others, and that is okay. We need to talk about that and have those conversations. Inclusivity and in policy making, and making sure that all parties are at the table when uh, these policies are made, will definitely further foster those conversations and allow those to be represented uh, efficiently and uh, completely. And then uh, for me, myself, I'm a Christian, and I do believe that as my duty as a Christian is to provide the information, but it's not my duty to convert anyone to, to Christianity. That is a specific uh, conversation between that person and, and, and God, so to speak. So, yeah. Thank you, Shalon. Ike, how can societies balance religious freedom with other rights and freedoms? JR, great to be back again. Thank you. And uh, Sh Shalon, great comment here on this. And I, I'll start off. How many wars have been fought over religion? We can't count them on both hands, can we? We currently have conflicts in the Middle East and in Europe raging partially because of religion. Uh, I was raised in a small town in Tennessee. I was raised in a Baptist church. And I was taught this is the only religion. All the other religions are wrong. Well. You know, I have evolved because my girlfriend is Catholic. I go to a Catholic church with her sometimes. Um, I also have traveled the world and taken part in rituals of other religions throughout my travels in the military. And I believe there's one God that we all answer to at some point in time. But to Shalon's point, it's not my place to convert that person to my religion or any specific religion. Should we be able to balance a difference of opinion on religions along with acceptance, I think we can do that. Uh, if you look back at Malcolm X during this time, he was a very hardcore Islamic uh, during this time. As, as he evolved before he was assassinated, he came to believe that Christianity was not all bad. Other religions are not all bad. He started worshiping with other religions, and then he ended up being uh, assassinated because of those beliefs that he had evolved from. So uh, education is key. Uh, to Shalon's point, acceptance is key. Uh, I don't have all of the right answers, but I can give you my experience as a Christian being raised in the Baptist church as to what that means as far as my spiritual travels are. But they may be different than someone who's a Catholic or someone who's a Muslim or someone who's Buddhist. Everyone has a different uh, experience with their religious upbringing and who am I to say that mine is the one and only true religion? Uh, so it starts out with being accepting of others and understanding everybody else's beliefs. Outstanding start. Andrew, what do you think? How can societies balance religious freedom with other rights and freedoms? Great question. And great to be back at the coffee house. Um, I do have the answer, believe it or not. It's, <laughs> it's love, right? Amazing. Does that mean it's easy? It's, it's not easy, obviously. If it was, well, I should say it's simple, right? But simple doesn't mean easy. Like so many things that I know what I have to do, but do I do that? I don't, right? That's my job is to love people. So how can we balance that? If we think about loving each other, taking care of each other, not about our ego, not about me, mine, as we see so much throughout society now, if it's the bigger picture and what's good for everyone, I think that's how we start to get there. It's not, I'm above it. I have no choice. It's not that. We are free when we have some ground rules, somewhere to start. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, some great conversation. Uh, we've got some time for go backs. Yes, specifically for me, I think we need to take ourselves out of being the judges. It is not our place to judge anyone, especially in terms of religion. So if we try to judge what someone is doing, that for me, my belief is that it's not our place and we need to stay out of it. Great comments, Shalon. Um, as, as we balance our rights against other rights, there's a reason we have amendments to the Constitution. Our founding fathers while they had a great vision and a great document for a new world, 
There was a reason for amendments because they didn't get everything right. Religion is a very controversial, complex, hard issue. We have to balance our religious freedoms against the First Amendment. And to have those conversations includes education, first and foremost. Andrew. I think we have to be very careful that it doesn't become intolerance that's legislated, right? So we start seeing things in law that we creep away from what used to be, and now we're calling that intolerant, and now we can't think for ourselves, and where are we really at? So I think the education, I think I'm not the judge, but yeah, loving everyone. If we're loving everyone, we don't have a problem. Coming out of the gates, very good discussion. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll take a look at what effective measures might there be to prevent and respond to religious discrimination and intolerance. And we're back. In this block, we're going to share ideas on what effective measures might there be to prevent and respond to religious discrimination and intolerance. Andrew, let's start with you. What are your thoughts? We know that we should have an open media, right? So I hope we know that we don't have an open media. Uh, Ike was involved in the media. Uh, I'm sure he can say all kinds of things about that. but. I think from when I was a kid, I don't know, let's rewind 40 years, what the media was then to what it is now, I think are very different. Uh, always driven by money, of course, so that's, that's not love, that's ego, that's pride, that's money. What gets it done for me? What sells the commercials? What? So that's not effective in helping control uh, what we all need to hear. Well, I, I, I should say it is controlling but that's not what we need to hear. We're not hearing about the truth, right? We're hearing about what we should be. We can't think for ourselves anymore. Critical thinking. What kid this today is being thought, taught to think for themselves critically? I don't think that is something that's thought about. How many kids are introduced to Plato and Aristotle now, right? If people can't think for themselves, it's easier to control them. So. Now I'm going to take away your freedom. Did you even notice? Yeah, we should notice because we see attacks on religious institutions all across the world, be they Christian or otherwise. And we see things like what happened at the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. No place for that. What does it have to do with sport? What does it have to do with the betterment of mankind? Nothing. Thank you, Andrew. Shalon, what effective measures in your mind might there be to prevent and respond to religious discrimination and intolerance? Yes, yeah, so I think that we first need to acknowledge that we live in the United States. The United States is a complete melting pot. And so we are going to have differences. We are going to have people coming with different perspectives, different religious, cultural beliefs. We are not, we, our, our history in the United States is very short, so we do not have those millennial, those you know, those centuries old traditions, religious practices that you would see in Europe or Africa or Asia. And so I think the acknowledgement right there is one of the preventative measures. Also, um, going back to education, I'm always a fan of education and just having people understand what others believe. Uh, I think those, that also would be a preventative measure. Um, and acceptance, tolerance, uh, of course we are always going to have those that are intolerant and it's unfortunate in this country that we do have that, but um, you know, if the shoe was on the other foot, I would think that they would want those same recognitions, right? Also in terms of response, having policies, uh, laws on the books and keeping, to Andrew's point, keeping those laws on the books for uh, pr those protections is very critical, I think. Also, in terms of the police, um, the police and our lawmakers need to have an acknowledgement uh, that any violations of religious practices, beliefs, 
you know, need to be prosecuted. And the message needs to be the same. You know, uh, one religion is not above the other. And those that are working in our, our government sector need to uh, adhere to that. Also promoting interfaith conversations uh, so that even the leaders of particular religions, uh, that also gains a, 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 an avenue or you know, an environment of acceptance as well. Amen. Thanks, Shalon. I, what effective measures might there be to prevent and respond to religious discrimination and intolerance in your mind? Well, JR, I, I have to admit it's going to be hard to follow up on Andrew and Shalon's comments on this. Uh, I think a good starting point, if we just want to start and have a national conversation, why don't we get on stage in one setting all of the leaders in America of every specific religion? Let's get the, the head bishop for the Catholic Church. Let's get the leader of the Protestant movement in America. Let's get the leader of the Muslim movement in America. Let's have a national conversation that is televised on every network like a presidential debate. Let's have the conversation and find out where we are similar. And we can also come to an agreement that, yes, we do have differences, but those differences are what make us stronger. Um, also, we can't legislate our way out of tolerance or intolerance. Um, more often than not, those that preach tolerance are the most intolerant, I have found. So those that may uh, denigrate me for my Protestant religion or Andrew for his Christian religion or Catholic religion um, are the ones that are the least accepting when it comes to such a topic because they are of the belief that their religion or their, uh, their structure of belief is the only way and the right way. We have to break down those barriers, and I go back to education, what Shalon has talked about uh, in both segments. Uh, and I do believe we cannot legislate our way out of this. It's an education piece that has to start at home. And I do believe that w we could make some headway and start chipping away at these uh, intolerance or some of these disagreements when it comes to religion, which is a hard topic. Let's get all national leaders of every major religion on stage, and let's have a national broadcast and a national conversation. Make sight. How about some go-backs? These specifically, um, I think public dissent, uh, whenever someone is exhibiting behaviors of intolerance, if the public comes together, to Ike's point, uh, that, that would be a deterrent, I believe. I think we're more uh, similar than we are not similar. But the catchy headlines on the evening news, or if it bleeds, it leads, as they say. Um, when people don't agree, that tends to be the top of the news. Why don't we talk about the things we do agree on and build from that? That's a foundation we can build off of to have a more accepting acceptance of everyone's religion in America. Well, could. I, I couldn't say more. Time. You're, you're in the red. That's it. <laughs> we ran out of time. Oh. Um, Y'all have had some very interesting ideas on this topic, very productive. And uh, after we come back from break, we'll explore how governments can ensure the neutrality of the state in matters of religion while protecting religious freedom. We'll be right back. And we're back. In our final block, we look at religious freedom from a different angle. How can governments ensure the neutrality of the state in matters of religion while protecting religious freedom? Mike, let's go with you first. Thank you for that question, JR. Toughest of the three questions that we've talked about so far, I believe. But pure and simple, governments cannot endorse a specific religion. Governments can be accepting of everyone's religion, and within those constructs, have rules and regulations and guidelines that are accepting of Christianity and Islamic faith and Buddhism. Uh, that's how the governments can ensure religious freedom while not endorsing a specific religion. Once governments start endorsing specific religions or a religion is the official religion of any said government, that's when the building of intolerance starts coming in. That's when people start 
protesting and becoming really upset. Uh, people will feel marginalized. They feel excluded from the conversation. So governments have to instill rules and regulations at the national level it, when we're talking about America that's accepting of all religions, but it doesn't marginalize any religions. So if I want to go to a Baptist church on Sunday and I want to talk about my Christianity in the workplace, that shouldn't be offensive to anyone. That doesn't mean I personally as an employee is I'm endorsing a religion. I'm just speaking from my specific experience as a Christian. That's not endorsing a government uh, religion per se. And as long as we adhere to these kinds of regulations that are instilled at the state and national levels, everyone can have their anonymity to the religion that they want. Uh, I should be able to talk to Andrew about my experience as a Christian. He should be able to speak to me about his experience as a Catholic without being offended. You're going to always have that segment of the population that's offended by something that is not their belief, and they are intolerant of everything else. So the government writ large, just be accepting of religions, have those regulations in place to where I'm protected and Andrew's protected and Shalon's protected, and I think we start on a good foot. Right. Andrew, in your mind, how can governments ensure the neutrality of the state in matters of religion while protecting religious freedom? Well, in this country, we've gotten away from that neutrality. Uh, if we are paying attention at all, we know that neutrality is not there. Uh, there are outright attacks on religion in this country, uh, unacceptable. It's been politicized. It shouldn't be political. It should be neutral. It should be for the betterment of society. Now, well, I believe in the devil and he's my, okay, well, that's going to be a problem for society, right? So is the government saying, well, that's allowed too? Uh, we're going to run into some challenges there. So we're going to allow that to what end? Where does that get us? So is that intolerance? No, that's, I think, logical. I think that is something we need to discuss more openly. We're afraid. We're not allowed. We can't have the Ten Commandments in a school. We can't have a discussion anymore. And so uh, the lawmakers are just going to throw laws at us and say, here's what can be said, here's what can be done. Wait a second, since when were you, the elected officials, telling me what I can and can't say, what happened to my freedom? That doesn't exist anymore, as far as I know. I can't openly make a statement without being vilified in the media or even by the government saying, well, we can't have people like that saying those kind of things. I'm not judging anyone, but my freedom has been taken away. I can't do or say these things. It's the state is telling me what I can and can't say in a school. I cannot go to a school and say, hey kids, did you know this? Did you know that Christ died for your sins? I cannot go to a public school and say that. But I can have a drag show at a public school. Well, why is one allowed and not the other? That's a good question. Shalon, what are your thoughts on uh, how governments can ensure the neutrality of the state in matters of religion while protecting religious freedoms? That is a very good question. <laughs> uh, but I think we definitely need a true separation of church and state, so to speak. Um, establishment of a legal framework uh, that supports um, that separation as well, that clearly defines what is what is not allowed. Um, an understanding from, we definitely need an understanding from our uh, legislators, our judicial uh, teams, that they are elected officials and they're here to serve all citizens of the United States, not just maybe what they believe. Um, and they need to keep that objectivity in their rulings, in their policy makings, and having that understanding uh, is certainly necessary. Um, Public-run facilities should not have a uh, preference or the perceived preference of one religion or another and maintain that neutrality as well. Um, acknowledging maybe that one religion is not superior than another, I think that's important. Uh, you know, 
we are a, a multinational, a uh, multi-religious uh, society. And so those that are in government, although they may have their personal beliefs, they cannot bring that into their work. And I think that truly needs to be separated. We got a little time for go-backs. Uh, Shalom makes some great points. Consistency is key when it comes to rules and regulations that our governments and elected officials make. Uh, but at the same time, to Andrew's point, why can I not go into a facility and say, Christ died for your sins? That doesn't mean that I am promoting a government-specific policy on Christianity. It's just my personal beliefs. Uh, that doesn't mean that the government that runs that facility is endorsing that specific belief. So it, it's a fine balancing act, and I go back to tolerance. We should be able to be tolerant of everyone's religious beliefs while at the same time not restricting my beliefs and being able to espouse those beliefs. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to get back to being able to have a discussion and not being offended because someone said something. I can say something in love, not judge you, and we can move forward. I don't agree with you. Doesn't mean I dislike you. We should be able to have a swell time after a disagreement. But we know the opening ceremonies, the Paris Olympics, if that was mocking a Muslim religion, there would have been riots, wars. Good thoughts. Excellent. And um, I want to thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank our panelists, thank and also thank you guys out in the audience uh, for joining us uh, on this thoughtful exploration of issues that shape our nation and our values. Remember, it's through respectful dialogue and a steadfast commitment to our principles that we can navigate the complexities of our times. Stay tuned. Future programs will tackle more consequential social issues, including education and the environment. Goodbye for now from the Coffee House where every conversation is a step towards a brighter, more grounded tomorrow. The Coffee House Tour has been sponsored by Jiffy Images, residential and commercial real estate photography, and Odyssey America Media. For a printed transcript of the Coffee House Tour, send $1 and a self-addressed envelope to DreamShot Films, 4580 Fair Valley Drive, Fairfax, Virginia, 22033.